The 2010s were filled with extremely exciting forwards in the NHL. Patrick Kane, Crosby, Malkin, and Ovechkin were incredible. Especially with the NHL coming off of a bleak time for scoring in the 2000s, this influx of offensive talent did wondrous things for the league. Lost in the offense though was Phil Kessel. Everybody forgets how good the hot dog man really was. Thinking back, you wouldn't believe me if I told you he ranked 7th on the points leaderboards for the 2010s. But there he was, just one point away from tying Mulkin for the decade and ranking above a future Hall of Famer in Brad Marchand. He was incredible during that stretch, and he was on a surefire path towards becoming a Hall of Famer himself. But then entering his age 32 season, on the Arizona Coyotes, his production fell incredibly hard. Going from an even point per game pace the last season to a disastrous 0.54 point per game pace in the shortened 2019-20 season. What happened to Phil Kessel? Well, before we answer that, let's go back a little bit in time and see where Kessel even came from. Kessel, born on October 2, 1987 out of Madison, Wisconsin, started his minor hockey career with the U14 Madison Capitals, where he put up Gretzky-esque numbers. He registered 176 goals and 110 points in only 86 games, coming to 286 total points. Yeah, that got him noticed quite a bit. Enough so to get him a promotion up to the U18 club at just 15 years of age. The new league did slow him down quite a bit, but not that much. He still put up 113 goals and 45 assists in just 71 games. Kessel was elite, and there was no denying it. After spending his next few seasons with the USA national team, he went to the University of Minnesota to set himself up to get drafted the following year. Scoring 51 points, including 18 goals across only 39 games, Kessel got his name on the draft radar, and the Bruins ultimately took him fifth overall. Kessel's rookie year was unlike any other rookie season we have seen in the NHL. After making his NHL debut just two months prior, on October 6, 2007, Kessel went in for a doctor's appointment and found out that he had testicular cancer. This alone should be enough to derail any player's career. I mean, you or I could not possibly imagine what was going through his head during this time. But only five days after his diagnosis, on December 16th, following surgery, he was declared cancer-free by doctors, and less than a month after his diagnosis, he was back in the Bruins lineup. During award season that spring, Kessel was obviously awarded the Bill Masterton Trophy for perseverance. As his career went on and he joined the Maple Leafs, Kessel proved himself as a great player in the NHL. Over his six-year run with the Leafs from 2009 to 15, he scored 181 goals and 394 points in 458 games. That production isn't exactly a generational talent kind of level, but that's still incredible especially if you consider where he was playing at the time, on the god-awful 2010s Toronto Maple Leafs. Kessel represented Toronto three times in the All-Star game during that stretch, and every single one of those seasons, he led the team in points. Kessel was basically a one-man crew on offense. He did have the likes of Tyler Bozak and James Van Riemsdyk around him, but that's not exactly All-Star level help. The Leafs as a team also sucked during this stretch, averaging 23rd place during that time. Their highlight of this era was blowing a 4-1 lead to Boston in the playoffs, which, as a Leafs fan myself, I don't think I'm ever going to forget that. Kessel's fortune turned though in the 2015 offseason, as the Leafs were really cleaning house to tank the following year, which by the way worked extremely well and ended with them drafting their franchise player, Austin Matthews. I'm off topic though, but in the Leafs yard sale of 2015, Kessel was moved to Pittsburgh for Kasperi Kapanen. Kapanen's effectiveness on the ice was extremely questionable for the Leafs, but he did have one of the greatest social media moments in NHL history when he commented Cheeks Klapanen on his girlfriend's Instagram. Back to Phil though, while Kapanen was getting up to nefarious activity in Toronto, Phil was thriving in Pittsburgh. Kessel made an immediate impact for the Pittsburgh Penguins as he registered their first goal of the 15-16 season against the Coyotes. Kessel rode that wave throughout the season and finished with a respectable 26 goals and 59 points over a full 82. 
Of course though, we're talking about the 2016 Penguins. Nobody cares about their regular season. It was all about the playoffs for them. Kessel did not disappoint. Playing up on the first line with the big guys, Kessel led the entire team in points during their cup run, elevating his game to an unforeseen level. A level that we haven't seen because frankly, Kessel never played much meaningful hockey with Toronto. I mean, he was good in his limited playoff experience with Boston and Toronto, but nothing like this. Kessel finally got a chance to perform on the biggest stage in hockey, and he took that opportunity and ran with it. The Conn Smythe that year did go to Crosby, because overall he had a tougher job as a centerman, and is better defensively, but it can be argued that Kessel was robbed of the Smythe that season. Phil was riding high off a monumental playoff run, and had another great regular season, recording 70 points across yet another full 82, pushing the Penguins into second place in the league and on to another playoff run, where they won it yet again. Kessel didn't lead the team in playoff scoring this time, but he still finished third behind Crosby and Malkin. These two seasons proved that when he truly wanted to be, he could be a real top tier talent in the league. He finally had a reason to elevate his game to the next level. The next two seasons Kessel played was even better than most of his past seasons, recording 92 points in 17-18 and 82 in 18-19. Then infighting happened. Allegedly, Evgeny Malkin was not happy with Kessel's attitude after winning two straight, claiming that Kessel was content with the two rings and wasn't hungry for more playoff success. What has been confirmed though is that Malkin basically told Penguins GM Jim Rutherford that they have to trade Kessel or he was gonna leave. Rutherford knew they couldn't lose Malkin, and so even if the claims are true or not, Kessel had to be the fall guy. He was traded to the Coyotes for a noted good guy, Alex Galchenyuk, and an AHLer. That really marked the beginning of the end for Phil Kessel, a guy who played on mediocre teams the first 10-ish years of his career, then got a chance to ride high with some of the game's best only to be traded back to mediocrity. He put up only 38 points in the 70 games in 1920. He did return to decent form though in 21 and 22 as sort of a last hurrah, getting 43 and 56 points respectively. That proved to be where the wheels fell off for him though, and recorded only 36 points with the Golden Knights over a full 82 games the next season. Although he did add another ring to his collection, but he only played four playoff games. He wasn't bad when he left Pittsburgh, but he was nowhere near the level he was for the Pens. There was a rumor following Kessel his entire career that seemed to originate in Toronto media that Kessel didn't work hard and had a terrible diet. Well, the diet part is a bit true, as a former teammate of his Blake Wheeler claims that he never drank water. But Kessel was in no way lazy, at least up until he joined Arizona. Another former colleague of his, Morgan Raleigh, said that he'd come into training camp and be by far the strongest guy there. His work ethic was there during most of his career, but there's no guarantee that he kept it up in Arizona. But can you blame him? At that point in his career, he had done practically everything he possibly could. He had won two cups, a major award in the Masterton, and the only thing he had to do was coast to get his consecutive games played record. Kessel had gone through so much in his career, and he had finally won it all, so I believed he deserved to be able to phone it in. Who knows, maybe if he keeps pushing he can build a stronger Hall of Fame case, but that also risks injury and losing his durability streak. It seems like Kessel is now officially retired, as he recently failed a tryout with the Vancouver Canucks, and has remained unsigned. As it stands, Kessel is leaving hockey with a decently strong Hall of Fame case, with 413 goals and 992 career points across 1,286 games, and the holder of the record for the most consecutive games played. Who really knows if he'll get in, but his name should definitely be in the conversation. Phil Kessel was a player who bolstered the 2010 scoring influx, yet many forget just how good of a player he really was. Despite the work ethic rumors and his game being very one-dimensional, Kessel will go down as one of the greatest players of the previous era. Even if he did get lazy towards the end, he earned it. That's all I have for today though, so thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think of Kessel. 
for more content from me. Check out my previous video on the NHL Heart Race, and stay tuned for weekly uploads on Saturday at 1pm Eastern. See you later!